All right, YouTubers, what's going on? It's just finance host about Mike. What's popping, everybody? First, I want to show you guys my beautiful home. It is a 1910 build of Victorian house. Um, a lot of newly renovated around original crown work, uh, multi zone central air. Reason why I'm showing you, not really like I'm doing a tour, but you know, grade A uh, chef refrigerator along with uh, the stove. Got more than one mic. Beautiful home. Uh, reason why I'm showing you guys this is because I know a lot of people love to just hate on people. And somebody's going to say something to make fun of my my basement, a.k.a. my dungeon, as I call it. But uh, that's the reason I'm showing you guys this stuff. Because somebody's going to be like, oh, da 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 ah, ah, You know, envious people. Uh, so, first, I want to say yes. It is an uh, unfinished basement, a.k.a. my dungeon. And at the same time, at the end of the day, it is mine. I don't pay for storage. I have a home and I don't pay for storage because all my stuff is in my basement. And again, that's mine. I have a three car garage I could put stuff in. But for climate reasons and whatnot, uh, I just decided it's easier just to have stuff here where I don't have to walk outside. I don't have to walk about 60, 60 feet or so. Um, to my garage, um, depending on, regardless on what the climate is, I could be in my underwear and come right down here versus I have to put something on, at least have decent, eat, just to walk to my garage, then open it up and deal with, if it's too hot outside, it's going to be hot in my garage. If it's too cold, it's going to be cold in my garage because, again, there's no heat or anything set up to my garage. Um, so with that basically being said, um, I'm basically going to show you guys uh, what I've accumulated. I'm going to show you guys what $7,000 worth of accumulation is. Uh, don't, well, before the pandemic, I had probably approximately about 40 to 50 something bins of toys and whatnot. And uh, since a lot of thrift shops and, and stuff has reopened, um, I have went ham. At first, I was kind of like paying attention to people that were talking about there may be a toy shortage this Christmas. That was my real motivation to just go out there and buy a lot of stuff because during the pandemic, uh, because people I know who who sell on Marketplace, Macari or Macari, what would they call, what would they call it? Other um, selling venue, um, social media venues as well as eBay and especially Amazon. Everybody I know was doing very well selling stuff. During the three and a half, almost four, well, almost four months of craziness that was going on. Um, and I sold out of everything and I decided, you know what? All those months off, I was looking at old videos of from Chase after the right price. Fortunately for him, he was able to still buy stuff during the pandemic, which is pretty cool. I love watching his videos. I love watching Jesus, Rock, um, you know, Metal Jesus Rocks. Um, then you got Sprooch. Um, there's so many different individuals out there that do a lot of videos that I love. Of course, my man, Rene, uh, from Bargain Hunters. He, you know, he's the big uh, German dude from, uh, you know, the uh, the Storage Wars um, TV show. I actually like him, his family. Uh, I like genuine people, you know. he, you know, I just like people who just do what they do. Um, you know what I mean? I, I, it's hard to explain. <laughs> but you guys know what I mean. Uh, anyhow... Uh, I just want to, you know, give back a little bit to the YouTube, to YouTube. Um, I'm just going to, you know, quickly go over a couple of things here just to give you guys a, a quick hindsight uh, for anybody who's contemplating or maybe they, you know, a lot of people lost their jobs. A lot of people are only working a couple of days and or a couple of hours a week and they're still not making ends meet. A lot of companies are going out of business because of this pandemic. A lot of people, a lot, unfortunately, a lot of mom and pop stores, comic shops, hobby shops, um, little swap meets. Cause you know, you got people that, um, that actually, you know, they're living, you know, like they make their money and send their kids to school, you know, um, put food on the table, clothes on people's backs by, you know, selling in a flea market. You do have flea markets that are open anywhere from three to even five or more days a week. And this is how they make their living. They buy storage units and all they buy from people and they, they have like little stores and little shack, little spots in uh, flea markets, uh, whether they're indoor and outdoor. And for those out there who are trying to find a way to make, 
you know, make a living and keep some money in their pocket. But the only problem is, you know, the true philosophy is, is, is plain as day, plain and simple. Scared money don't make money. You know, when you when you go in business for yourself, you got to spend money to make it. You just got to be very wise about how you go about it. Um, with that basically being said, everything I brought here, this is a huge sacrifice for me and my family. Because money that I would normally buy stuff and then turn around and resell and make a quick, you know, make a good, decent and or quick profit is almost non-existent uh, with this stuff. You know, um, just to give you guys a quick hindsight. Um, during, the, well, before the pandemic and during the pandemic, from right here, if you look at this, if you see on right on the inner side of my fingers, from right here, from the middle of this, um, Imagine X Power Ranger, so from here, all the way to about the outside of my finger now. Like right where this line is right here is where I had been stacked up because I had a big old fat back 36 inch TV that was here and it was on a long um, TV stand that was made specifically for it or made for TVs of that magnitude and that weight back then. Um, so all my stuff was basically from here to that corner and then from that corner to right where this vent is like right here and that was probably about 40 to 50 something bins full of stuff and then of course i had stuff out to here then i had this processing table right here link coming this way like coming across the long way and then this one was right where it is but it was out a little bit more um i have since put both of them here and I've wrapped everything around after I got rid of that TV and that TV stand. So that way, everything's a lot more accessible and I can walk around my whole basement. Um, and of course, there's stuff all over the place uh, because I took a break from processing my Legos, as you see here. Uh, I'm going to get to all this stuff in a second. It, this video may be 20 to 30 minutes long, maybe, maybe even a longer because... I want to try to explain to people out there so they know what they get themselves into. Again, if you have extra liquid money, what I mean by liquid is, you know, easy flowing money to where you can put a couple of hundred or even a couple of thousand dollars into buying some stuff and then just holding it and not making that quick profit back. Like, you know, you know, you get people that buy stuff, you know, week to week basis, day to day basis. As soon as they get home, hell, sometimes I, I see a lot of people posting stuff they're going to buy while they're at the thrift shops. And they just post up and they, you know what I'm saying? And, and they post it up and then they'll have it sold or they already got people looking at it even before they get to the register and buy it. And sometimes they'll be there all day and, you know, the item didn't even be, get paid for yet and they already have it posted up. But they know they're going to buy it. So, you know, no harm, no foul. Right. But, um, you know, this is the most of anything I've ever had to where I had this much toys or collectible stuff in one any any given one time to where I had this much accumulated stuff that was specifically brought for reselling purposes. I've never had over 20 to to maybe 30 American Girl dolls whatsoever. Before the pandemic I had about maybe 6 or 7 I sold them. I had one black one left with a couple of accessories including a horse and a stable for the horse. And I had one person after the after I got like another five or six American Girl dolls. A lady offered me seventy five for it. At that particular time, uh, it was on it was up there on Facebook for months, and nobody bit on it. And then all of a sudden, once the once a lot of places start opening up, and I got like six other six six or so other American Girl dolls. Now all of a sudden, people coming out the woodwork, and somebody wanted it, and I decided not to sell it because I said, like, you know what, I'm just gonna collect a whole bunch of American Girl dolls. They're more, they're just as popular, if not even, they hold a lot more value even than Barbies now. Speaking of Barbies, I do have some old vintage Barbie, um, some other stuff. I am going to go through this stuff and I'm going to take the stuff that is, that's a lot more, uh, how you say, you know, a lot more accessible to keep and then everything else. I'm just going to sell off a lot and just, I don't know, I, you know, I may hold on to it. It's kind of tough because, you know, again, this is not money that I'm seeing because this is it's almost like buying stuff for you to collect 
and just have known that you're spending money on stuff and you're not turning around and you're not reselling it anytime soon. So it hurts because, you know, it's over seven thousand dollars worth of stuff. Some of y'all probably like, what? That's not seven thousand dollars worth of stuff. Well, let me let me sit back and let me stand back and show you. And if anybody don't know how how accumulation works, you're out your damn mind. Uh, you cannot sit here or stand here and look at this. Now, for me to go out here and buy this stuff, ninety about ninety percent of the stuff did come from thrift shops. Um, mainly a lot. Of, some of it, I mean, a lot of it, I did buy um, on regular days. I just had to have it because the prices were good and there were no sales. And then the major, the mass majority of it were on 25 and 50 percent. Very few 75 percent. But I must have sold about five or six video game collections. Of, I'm talking about huge collections of stuff. So with all that stuff I've sold and probably about three or four uh, of like four to five bins of Lego mini well, Lego brick stuff. That must uh you know put my price of about around seventy five hundred that I spent on everything. It probably knocked it down to me kind of being in a hole for just around. But I went around and used that same. I recycled that money to get back to invest right back into this stuff. So the stupidest thing I did was not was not save. I should have took some and saved and held it, and took the other stuff and just you know. You know, reinvest that money, but I took every dime back into everything I I sold and just reinvested. So it kind of brings everything back up again. It's just that all it did was was magnify everything because a lot of these toys are worth a lot more than the video game stuff. Obviously, you know, um, a lot of this stuff is it, easier to find video game stuff than I ain't gonna say than everything here because a lot of this stuff is basic. You know what I mean? But again, it's it's a lot. You know, it is a lot. You know, somebody can come in here. There may be a person that's a, that has a hobby shop or a toy shop that, or opening a shop, and this would be the perfect stock for that for that person or persons. There may be stuff in here for a person who's a Barbie collector, but all this stuff is meant to be sold in bulk. None of it is meant to be sold one piece at a time at all. Um, so my plan is maybe one day to get more stuff. Keep the best of the best and then take a lot of the other stuff and just to go to the flea market and or do a garage. I am going to do a garage sale this weekend. You know, hopefully the weather permitted. I didn't do it last weekend. So this weekend, um, all I have is toys and some sneakers and autograph stuff, which is not really that great for over here. Like, you know, when I do garage sales outside my house, toys do sell. Don't get me wrong. Um, I sold all my, my Nerf gun collections and all that stuff. But. You know, sneakers, okay, but, you know, you got to have good sneakers and you get, like, a lot of the Africans and, you know, Hispanics that come through and they want to pay nothing for this stuff and then turn around and send it to their country and make five to eight times more than what they sell for here. Because everybody think, oh, third world country, nah, man, you could, you, you know what I'm saying, you could sell a pair of sneakers to somebody for $25 and they'll turn around and sell it in their country for 75 to 80 US dollars not even not even the Dominican or Mexican or whatever money but in American dollars so don't get you know what I'm saying this so don't think of you know hey you're doing somebody a good favor by oh well you know they send it to Haiti or DR or Mexico or Guatemala or wherever man listen you think these people paid 3 to 500 dollars to ship shit because they giving it away or they or they underselling it no let me explain something to you you could buy a range you could buy a, a 2004 Range Rover, right here, anywhere here for ten to fifteen thousand dollars, depending on the condition and and the you know what which one it is and the mileage. You go to Trinidad, you can sell that son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm trying to you know keep from cussing. You can sell that same Range Rover in Trinidad or Tobago for seventy to eighty thousand U.S. dollars. You go to Guyana, that's Central America, not the Caribbeans. Guyana is not in the Caribbean. It's in Central America. You know, and you'd be surprised what a lot of this stuff go for. So don't get it twisted. Even a lot of parts of Africa. Why do you think people buy Toyotas here for like four to five thousand dollars? People buy a whole bunch of sneakers and stuff. And they have people think, oh, my country is poor, my this and that. Man, listen, you can sell a nice pair of sneakers that is worth eighty dollars sold on eBay 
to somebody for twenty five or thirty dollars because you feel sorry for them and knowing that they send it to their country. No, you're an idiot because they go to their country and they're gonna sell that same thing they gave you thirty U.S. dollars and they're gonna sell it to one of their poor people for the equivalents or more than seventy to eighty, maybe even a hundred U.S. That's how they make a living, how they make money. Why do you think a lot of these people have family back home or you know like um every th- every three to six months they go back home and come back. You know, they know what they're doing, you know, you know, because in their country, people have no choice. People work and they have no choice. This, you know, they don't have, they can't go into a Kmart or Marshalls or, or Walmart in Africa or DR or somewhere. You know, um, they, it doesn't work like that there. You know what I'm saying? So don't get it twisted. So anyway, getting back to this again, I'm just trying to school people. I'm not trying to scold anybody. I'm just saying it for what it is. Uh, so with that basically being said, this is what around seven thousand dollars look like. You know, there's more stuff here. Um, this is what I have accumulated back from everything I sold. This kid named Tony, I must have sold everything to him. He's been my uh, my single. I mean, ever since the pandemic, he brought so much stuff from me that I don't even t- I don't even take my stuff to my people's in Chinatown no more. I just been bringing everything. I just been selling him everything. He lives literally seven minutes from me. He's in Newark. Uh, he's in North Newark, uh, which is right next to me, and I'm in East Orange, and we're literally seven minute drive from each other. So he's been buying all my stuff uh, ever since the uh, the mid of the pandemic. He came to my house, and he never had to use a mask or worry about ma- people in this house using masks, and nobody caught COVID. From each other, he didn't take it home to his children, and he didn't bring it here, and all that stuff. And I've had a lot of people come in my basement. Of course, people who came to buy, they have worn masks. And my basement, believe it or not, my dungeon is COVID clean because it has been clean. And every time people come here, I spray and I do this and that after they leave because I don't want to take that upstairs to the family and vice versa. So, now getting that out the way, again, just give you guys a, another wide screen view of all this stuff as you can see here again this is what seven what over seven seven thousand dollars look like and you have to be very 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 disciplined because again it, it, you, you don't understand i'm a guy who likes to buy and resell i'm not i'm not gonna say i'm impatient but i like to get things done and over with i'm not a procrastinator so for me the hardest thing was holding on to this stuff Cause I had so many, so many times I have so many people come. Hey, you got any video games? Lego? You got this, that, and the third. And I had all this stuff in the basement, and I could have made a lot of money from people who came to my garage sales. And I was like, not, some people I said no, I don't. Some people who came back, you know, more than twice, I have said yes, I do, but I'm not ready to get rid of that stuff, and it's in the basement. I've had three out of nine people who did request to come in the basement, and I did, I did come down here with them and. All three times it was a, it was a, a very bad mistake of choice in my on my half because they were such an annoyance. I mean, people were off me. I mean, it was just ridiculous. Come on, man. I mean, all the way up until maybe three weeks ago, but I've had people still message me like, "Hey, are you ready to sell stuff yet?" And I'm like, "No, I'm like, no. When I'm ready, I'll let you know. Please do not aggravate me." And I've told all three of them like that. And after I use the word, "Please do not aggravate me," they have since stopped. Um, because, you know, I mean, I did you a favor by showing you stuff when I really didn't want to. And this is why, you know, it's, it's just crazy. But this is a bin I got today. Um, again, this is how I get my bins. I don't know where my daughter put the tops. That's going to be now. That's going to be another thing. I got oh, this girl. Where did she put my tops at? I did have one guitar that I did price. I mean, I brought it for a certain price and I sold it for three fifty on uh, what you call it. Um, I don't remember the name of it. This is actually a, 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 um, a Ebenez um, acoustic. I am gonna price this bad boy up, but it is signed by somebody, and I'm not gonna say who it's signed by, but cool. Um, I also picked this up today. This is also have signatures on it. Um. Believe it or not, a lot of stuff you get from a lot of these thrift shops. When it like signed books, signed jer- this stuff is legitimately signed. Signed baseball, basketballs, baseball bats, footballs, 
And they are legitimate signatures. Some people just, they either pass away or they get tired of it. And maybe because they don't have a PSA or DSA um, certifica certification, instead of selling it, some people just, you know, donate it. So, out of hell with that. I'll just donate it to, you know, donate it or whatever. They don't care. Um, so, anyhow, going back to everything I was saying, um, you know, it's, it, it, it is, I mean, you know, you, I mean, of course, money, money is very important. You know, you have to have money and you have to have some kind of plan to be able to get stuff because not every state or everywhere everybody lives, they can walk up to a local thrift shop or a lot of places don't have flea markets like that. Um, some places it's hard to find garage sales. Like I'm a New Yorker. It was almost unheard of. I, I started knowing about garage sales when I came out here. I used to always see them on YouTube and I'd be like, wow, that's crazy. But, you know, unless you live in Long Island somewhere, it's very hard to to you know what I'm saying to know what garage sales or people that were doing garage sales in the city you know at least in the five boroughs or I would say at least um I, you know Queens Manhattan the Bronx and um Brooklyn you know maybe Staten Island because you know a lot of homes but and believe me I looked so <laughs> doesn't mean that they weren't there you know I'm just saying you know it is what it is so you know just to give you guys a quick uh heads up here um this is some stuff I also have um, been buying some, uh, some I would say, outfits. If I get them cheap enough, I will buy um, Halloween costumes. Last year, Isaiah won, won, and Halloween costumes were crazy. Were all over the place, you couldn't get them. And they were expensive. The cheapest ones, even like the regular cheap ninja outfits and stuff, you know, um, Walgreens and them were selling for like, Twenty dollars and better. You couldn't find a suit. You couldn't even find a regular cheap princess um costume for less than twenty four twenty or twenty four dollars. It was crazy. So this year I am gonna be buying a lot and I'm gonna be doing a garage sale, selling them. And if I sell some of them um for the prices I hope to get, then I'll buy more um you know before uh that comes up. Same thing with Christmas, like outside Christmas stuff and things of that nature. This I picked up yesterday. Um, this is the Fisher Price uh, Magic Train, a uh, Magic Track Train. I would um, a couple things you're gonna need. Obviously, let me tell you the essentials. First, find a location and place. Make sure you find a location and place to park with these locations. Set yourself up um, to be somewhere. Make sure you have water and snacks. Uh, some places do not allow water and snacks, but there's ways around that. You come with a bag, not a, not a shopping bag, but like a little bag around you or backpack or fanny pack and keep something in there and you know you want to avoid spending money out you know like out eating you know um take some snacks uh you know some places you might stand all day or you might be out there waiting for them to process stuff so you know you have to find your um your pattern when, when you're going to places you know try to get in good with uh with some of the employees in places because that goes a long way uh, if a lot of places, there are a lot of Hispanics there and you speak Spanish, you, man, you, you basically got everything covered. And if they get to know you and like you, because let's face it, man, nobody sticks together like Hispanics. Um, you speak Spanish. I don't care how light or dark you are. You speak their language. You can get in good with a lot of them, man. And You know what I mean? I, that's just case in point proven. That's proven. And, I mean, that's that's almost law. Um, that's very, very important. Uh, outside of that, you know, money, money is very important. You know, um, sometimes you could spend anywhere from $10 a day to a thousand dollars a day, depending on where you go, how expensive the place is, what you find, what they ask for it. And it's very important to have a working phone with minutes on it. Uh, and you want to make sure you, you know, you want to use, you always want to use eBay as a guideline. Don't think you know everything about toys. Because sometimes, you know, toys is just like the video game market. It fluctuates. It goes up and down. So it's very imperative that you take a phone with you and you make sure you go to eBay and you know how to use the camera on your eBay um, page so you can scan barcodes. Sometimes then it's, gonna, it's not going to show up. Sometimes you'll get a video game that has like a, like a GameStop or something tag over the SKU. Very easy. Just type it in, or you just you know open it. Um, open the uh, the game. Uh, excuse me. Open the game up. Like this one has it on the bottom, and just very simple. You know, you just 
open it flap like this you either um if the skew is on the top or at the bottom like this one is you just easily take this and you push it down or you just move the plastic to the side because the stick you know a stick will be hindering that or it'll be up here or sometimes here or here and you scan it and you want to make sure that you go to what it's sold for now what people ask me make sure you go to um sold items and like this this game was uh fifa 15 it was marked at six bucks that is that is high when you think about it being that it's you know it's almost a basic it's basically a six-year-old game um i didn't pay that it was half off of that that's why i got it um so i wound up paying three bucks for it i think this game probably goes for maybe seven dollars so the whole point of matter is if you get enough games and a game sell for an average of seven dollars sold on eBay, you see if, me. If I see two or three items almost back to back, um, sold for around seven to eight dollars, I will say okay, it's worth it worth seven fifty, because I've seen three of them sold almost back to back for that price range, and it's here for six dollars. So obviously, you don't want to pay six dollars just to make a two dollar profit. But if the item is actually three dollars and it's selling for seven, that's well, that's a four that's a four to five dollar profit per game. So the more games you buy, you can accumulate them, and you can do like a bundle once you get a system, and that's how you make your money. So that's another way to do it. Uh, again, you look for key things like this. This is a, a Fortnite figure. Uh, this is actually sealed. I'm not gonna open it up. Uh, it was actually a dollar ninety nine. Um, and again, it wound up being half off that, so it wound up being a dollar, even if it was four dollars. It could have been four ninety nine. It's still worth it because they sell for they sold for between ten and twelve. So you know, this is different ways to to get into your game. These I brought. I got these yesterday. I was about to leave one specific place, and it, it was just it just it just paid off to stay. I looked inside the double door, um, the double door windows, and I seen that they came out with a, a pamper box, almost similar to this, but a, a blue one that had all the pamper licensing and advertisements on it but it was a little it was almost the size of this bin from what i saw they still threw away a couple of items which did make me sick but um these are this whole stack right here is all empty boxes for stuff that i have upstairs in my office for my display that's why it's over here by itself i do have to put this stuff somewhere else because it, it is my it is it is specifically for me uh outside of that you know, going back to these guys, just to give you guys a heads up. Um, I'll get to, this, get to this back. I'll get back to this in a second. And then that bin that I showed you guys that I picked up earlier. You know, um, this section right here is all Lego. I have Lego from, I have like from brand new Lego still sealed. From, you know, a couple of big sets to small intricate sets like this. Like these little older guys here, I paid like $1.99 or something like that each for them. Um, they are, I believe, complete. I mean, they are in box, um, open but complete. Um, but this whole section here is all Lego. Even this, I picked this up. I got this for five bucks. One of the guys um, at the uh, Meadowlands sold this to me for five dollars because he felt bad at something he did on Saturday. So I wound up getting this. You know, it's not the best, but you know, there are some old knights and stuff in here. Um, probably about twenty or thirty figures in here with some of the. Uh, horses and pieces like that you know nice little decent box it was five, you know he gave it to me for five bucks uh well he actually said 10 and because of something he did i said well you know what you owe me so make it five and he was like all right no problem with that this is actually um a board game so this don't belong in this section but again this is all lego sealed and open box but complete then this is all my vintage board game stuff um, a lot of these games i gotta go through I do keep all the monopolies and stuff. Uh, I I do I go through this and figure out what's what, um, and you know whatnot. It's from here to this one, um, behind this um, Hemtoro thing. There's another bin, and then you got this one, and then you got just this stack of stuff here. And of course, that knockout game is supposed to be here, but ever evidently there's no room. Then I got this old um, Bob Bop and Rebop uh, thing from Hasbro as well. And of course, my Simpsons uh, Monopoly. I'm looking for one of those. Every time I find them, 
Fox is always beat up and always, always missing stuff. That's why I very rarely take them. And it's raining. It was, I, I went outside, it was raining. Now it's starting to rain again. And then here's just other miscellaneous stuff like um, Power Ranger Megazords down here. I got um, a couple of King Kongs in there. So a couple of Godzilla things in there. Then I have the uh, Mighty Morphin Power Ranger. Um, Rangers and the bad guys. These are all Zord. Zord related stuff. And then that. Then over here, I have different miscellaneous. Like I have a, a bin of G.I. Joe and Battle Corp guys who are like the fake versions of G.I. Joe. And some different miscellaneous year um, G.I. Joe vehicles. Here is some Transformers. Um, some are just parts. Most are actual figures as well as this one here and that one. Then his top bin is um, 1980s like um, He-Man and Thundercat related stuff. I have a couple of figures in here that I busted up from the legs. Um, then down here, from one, two, three, four, five, these are all Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle related. Here we have uh, two bins of Jurassic Park. Then you got this, the biggest dinosaur they made, or T-Rex they made for the Jurassic World. Then here I have these three bins, one, two, and three, full of miscellaneous Star Wars stuff. Then here I have, um, these are Mattel uh wrestlers then i have i think a mixture of maybe mattel with jack pacifics then these are some of the older jack pacifics like um the figures that that came out right before the regular sentence six inch line they're more like five inches or something like that i don't remember what's i think these are just like um box toys and stuff down here um and then here's all my superhero stuff from fortnite figures to this big Spider-Man headquarters, and these are all superhero-related stuff. Then here's, like, my girl stuff, like, um, Polly Pocket, Hatchables, um, Shopkins, um, LOL, you name it, they're here. My Little Pony, etc., etc. Um, then I have, like, this whole section here, from where my thumb is to my fingers. That little L section is Barbie-related stuff. Then here is my American Girl doll stuff, as you see. Then I have some Disney stuff here, two bins of that. Um, quick, I got into that stuff because I had a Mexican guy who came. I know he's Mexican. He came from Sunset Park, Brooklyn. He came out here three times. The first time we met out here, he every price I asked him, he didn't even argue with it. Um, that's why I like dealing with a lot of like Central Americans, South Americans, man, because like even at the flea market, they give me less trouble than anybody. If I'm selling sneakers to a Mexican or Ecuadorian, I very rarely have any issue or anybody trying to lowball me. They're the only ones that I them, them and most of the uh, the hipper, pothead blacks and white, and like the white kids, they don't really try to m muscle you and lowball you. Everybody else, oh, forget about it. Um. Anyway, getting out the way. Then we have Mighty Max stuff here. So this guy, he came out. He brought. I had a whole bunch of Disney figures. I was just gonna blow them out. And he was like, yo, these are good. I sell these in my store. He said, oh, what do you want for them? And I said, maybe enough. He said, what, 250 for everything? And I, I was like, okay. Um, I haven't seen, heard from him or whatnot. Um, so since then, I do get like a lot of like Disney characters and stuff in, in other bags of stuff like, like, I, like I showed you. I'll show you again. So now I've just been purposely buying a lot of Disney stuff. And I already have two bins full of them. Then here I have two bins of Imagine X. Uh, I used to buy a lot of Imagine X um, houses and stuff like that, but I since stopped. I would get Megazords and like certain, like certain vehicles and stuff that that people that I think people would want. Cause like a lot of the, the uh, headquarters and the bat, the bat, uh, what do they call them again? The uh, the bat caves and stuff. Those are hard to move. Um, so I have since I, I leave a lot of that stuff behind now and I just get the Imagine X figures and like the Megazord. I only got since the, since the pandemic broke, I must've seen about 15 of these. This is the best cleanest one I saw and it has the missiles in the chest. That's why I got that one. Um, and then of course how I break down my, uh, my Lego, you know, I get a lot of Legos, uh, a lot, a lot of minifigures come in bags with lego brick and then a lot of them come in bins like this you know a lot of them come in in these kind of bins and you and you know i gotta process them in a lot a lot of 
a lot of um fake Lego being there, a lot of the uh, the KO uh, figures along with KO um Lego sets. So you gotta break them down. I told I throw that stuff away. I only keep official Lego, uh, official figures, and all that stuff. And um, this is how I process them. Um, it's overwhelming. Sometimes I I come down here and I can like I'll put like maybe eight to fifteen figures together, and then sometimes I do like one or two figures. I get fed up and. I get, I, I get anxiety and I get overwhelmed and I got to stop because, you know, look at this. This is overwhelming, man. I still didn't get to this bin yet, which I brought from one place. I paid like 80 bucks for that and it has a whole bunch of stuff in it. And I think most of the sets are complete with the figures. So that's good. And down here, I just basically have, uh, I broke down, um, the Lego minifigures. Like, this bin is, like, you know, like, a lot of the main, like, uh, Minecraft, uh, Simpsons, um, like, Mystery Pack guys. This one is all DC and Marvel. This one down here is all Cops, Crooks, and First Responders. That one there is, like, Medieval and Lord of the Rings stuff. And then I got to process all this. This bin here is, like, uh, just um, torsos and legs. Then the one under it is um, all complete Star Wars. That one is like a lot of Lego City and miscellaneous. This middle one right here is like Ninjago, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and you know things like that. Then that one here on the bottom, this is like Lego City and just miscellaneous Lego figures. This is um, a bin that's already complete; it's full to the rim. And then that's the same thing. That's all. Those are all Star Wars characters complete as well, but already full to the brim. So just to give you guys a heads up on how I process and how I go about it. Then down here, I have a, a bag of just like miscellaneous weapons along with um, like um, minifigure parts and whatnot. I get a lot of that stuff put together and I'll sell that bag just like that. And then this is all like Lego friends and stuff like that. All Lego friends, all official Lego. And I keep all the Lego friends stuff in here that that's... Um, you know, um, that doesn't come with a set or whatnot. I could probably get like maybe $150 just for this bag all day. You know what I mean? Just to give you guys, you know, I'm, I'm not bragging. I'm just trying to, you know, help out and tell you guys, you know, just help out. I, I still ain't processed this. There's been like a month <laughs> sitting here and I ain't processed it yet. These are Lego, um, like uh, a lot of Lego vehicles, um, bikes, motorcycles, and stuff that I have them in bags. These are all complete. Um, then these are sets that are complete. No boxes, though. But all, all like maybe a fire truck that's complete. Things like that. But it is a complete item. Um, so I, 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 I keep those in here. I put them in Ziploc bags and I carefully put them in. And, of course, you know, once you stack enough stuff in here and you cover it, there's no, you know, it's very difficult for these to break apart. And even if they do... Somebody can put them back together because all parts are there because they're, they're in Ziploc bags. This is all full of the uh, Harry Potter. I forgot which house this is, but it is complete with instruction manuals and it's complete with all the figures, which is an important part. Um, but it's not complete, which means it is missing a lot of pieces to build a house or a castle, whatever the hell it is. But it, the main thing, it has all the instruction, man. It has all the instructions and it has all the figures, but it's incomplete. Same thing with this one. So I'm going to have a bin just for incomplete and you know what I mean? But again, it will say incomplete set, but has all many figures, which is always an important part of, uh, of something. Um, so just to give you guys a heads up of that. Then over here, some miscellaneous, um, Lego, I gotta, you know, figure out what I'm gonna put them together or just say F it and just put it in one large bin and stuff like that, or just put it with the rest of the stuff. I don't know yet. Then this is the only, you figure out all of this stuff here. Everything you see here that I searched for, I just decided to buy them because I don't want to waste the money on something else. Um, so I brought everything in here, but I was always going out looking for high-end boy toys and Marvel Legends and stuff like that. And since the start of, of Civilization opened it back up, this is all I got as far as Marvel and as far as Marvel Legends and DC type stuff. Um... You know, uh, not just this, but this bin, you know, this whole bin. Um, let me see if I can move this to the side real quick. Yeah. All right, that held it. So just to give you guys a, 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 a prime example, um, this is a pretty big bin. 
Unfortunately, I would have loved it. I would have had cake in here. I would have loved it if all of this or ha just half of that right there would have been this. But there are American Girl dolls there. So that's, and Barbie. So that's okay. But this is all I have for Marvel and DC kind of characters. You know, it's unfortunate. Ah, but whatever. I mean, well, as far as the high end stuff goes, because I do have like a lot of the Titan Hero stuff, which people do collect and buy for their kids. And again, like I said, this section right here is Marvel and DC characters, but they're like just the regular characters. Like this is all DC from the 90s, some from the 80s and 90s. I think mostly 90s. Then I have different uh, DC and Marvel characters here too as well. But these are like the high end stuff like the multiverse and legends and universe lines. So then here I have uh, this been full of boxed and loose, um, great conditioned uh, Funko Pop, along with this one as well. And then down here I have some stuff that I picked up. Uh, they were probably selling big bags of maybe anywhere from eight or so for like six bucks, which is a steal. These are uh, the uh, the Disney um, heroes and villains vinyl figures from Funko. These are like uh, blind, like little blind boxes. Uh, they could sell anywhere from a couple of bucks to fifteen, twenty dollars, even a figure, depending on what figure it is. But you never know. And then if you open it up, again, some figures go for anywhere from fifty cent up to. 30 40 bucks depending on the character again um so i have this one and this one um so that that was pretty cool then i just have like a lot of stuff like uh you know then you have these i keep these because they're in the box um so yeah going on to how i get stuff like i said a lot of lego sometimes lego minifigures are mixed sometimes they're complete sometimes they may not have all the hair pieces or they may have the the head, the hair piece, and the upper torso, and not the lower, or vice versa, or some will be complete or half complete, and they'll come in a bag this size or maybe a little smaller, or even sometimes a little bigger with mini with a uh, Lego brick. It'll be Lego brick mixed in with um, minifigure accessories and minifigure body parts and or minifigures. So you know that's how I accumulated so much stuff or so many um, minifigures. I keep the minifigures and I sell off the brick. Um, cause it's, you know, it's easy, you know, it's easier to get rid of figures and harder to get rid of brick, but people do buy the brick anyway. So again, this is stuff I did pick up yesterday. Most of these bags were $10 a bag, which is a steal. Um, and as you see here, this is all picked up yesterday. And this is basically how you do it. You know, you go to thrift shops. If you can, you find thrift shops near you that sell toys and get to know their schedules, get to know how they process, get to know when they process um, try to get in good with some of the employees over time. Don't do it. You know, you got to do it gradually, you know, just like everything you have to, you know, you have to earn your keep and earn your way in it. Cause a lot of places you will go to, you don't want to step on nobody's toes and make enemies. Cause some of these people are cool with some of the workers. And if you get in bad with them, you're going to get in bad with the workers and it's going to not, it's not going to be a good, pleasant visit for you. So you want to be cool with the people because it helps the time go by and then you get in good with the uh, workers as well. And that can make smooth s s selling for you. And then everybody would, you know, work out together in harmony. And that's what you want. Because you don't want to be hated or have people grab everything. Because listen, you know, you got two hands, two arms, and one set of eyes. And if you got four or five people walking around and they got it good with people and they cool with each other and not you, guess what? You're going to be walking out empty handed. So you don't want that. Don't have an attitude, you know, um, just get to know the lay of the land, depending on where you go. All that stuff is relatively important. Um, I'm sorry that this video is a lot longer than I anticipated it. I did not. Uh, but anyway, this just, you know, give you guys a quick glance of what I picked up yesterday. The only reason why I brought this one, this was actually $3.99. Um, this Batman, I can, I can get, I mean, I can easily sell him for five bucks. And it's like I'm making a dollar profit off of what I pay for this. But because of him, um, I do get a lot of these figures. So I brought it really for the $3 for him. Because, you know, I sell a whole bin of this stuff. And there's good money in that. So it's like a lot of uh, 1980s and 90s uh, figures. You know, as you see here. You know, different uh, stuff. 
I kept this here because um, I have to go through a lot of this stuff. So, yeah, with that basically being said. All right, let me end it off. Uh, this is also a bin I picked up yesterday from another thrift shop. It was actually $2.49. I got it because it had the smaller f turtle figures in here. That's why I paid for it. I figured it was worth it just for those guys. Unfortunately, these two guys here, he's missing an arm. Along, along with this tiger guy, he's missing his tail and arm. And I do have a nice... I don't know who car that is. I already forgot what I was saying. Sorry about that. So. All right. I'm sitting down right now. Tired. I get. I did get this Lego Friends. The box is, you know, the box, somebody scribbled all over it. I'm hoping it is complete, but it was only $5.99. So I was like, you know what? I grabbed it. It's a big box. This set sells... For $40 sold and more for this particular friend set. So that's why I got it. And then these guys, it was priced relatively cheap. A lot of Xbox games. I'm not going to say what they were priced for, but it was pretty cool. Um, this X-Men um, this X -Men Origins Wolverine is like a almost a $20 game sold used. A lot, a lot, of, a lot of decent games here. Um, they all sold for between 7 and better. They weren't nowhere near that price, so... Definitely a good buy. And again, I do get a lot of this stuff so I can accumulate. You know, um, so yeah, that that you know that was in this bag with this big. Uh, I'll show you guys this. Oh, might as well. I gotta take the bag out. Let me put the phone down for a sec. Sorry, my videos are not that. You know, I don't, I, I don't edit anything. I just keep, I just like doing my videos the way it is. I don't think I need, you know, I think what I do enough is, is, is good. I don't know what this says, but it says, not friends, enemies. Okay, I don't know what that was about. Then it says, hate with a heart here, and maybe this kid was going through something. Hugs and kisses, Emily the elf, he he. I, okay. Somebody was angry. But anyway, this set sells for around... It sold for $40. Uh, this has the box. Um, hopefully, it's complete. And if it has the three figures in there, I will be putting this in my Lego section as a complete set. So, I do got to process that. And again, let me show you guys this stuff. The, the, again, this is what I picked up today. Again, so for the original Xbox, we have uh, Midnight Club 2. The original for, um, Forza Motorsports... Um, Halo 2, Mech Assault, um, Hitman, Blood Money, Star Wars Battlefront 2, and of course for the Xbox 360, we have um, X-Men Origins Wolverine. Then for the original Xbox again, we have Medal of Honor Rising Sun. Uh, can somebody also donate this? This is, this is probably worth about $30, $40. Unfortunately, it's over and... Since last year, I've been I've been buying a lot of Nerf guns and holding them for the whole winter. So I'm gonna be. Uh, I think I was gonna sell a lot of these, but I decided to hold on to them. This is a uh, kind of like an old school version of a Super Soaker. This is how they used to look when they first started out. Um, I would probably sell this for like forty forty dollars. Um, I'm not gonna sell it now because. Summer's, summer's over, really. So, I really, you know what I'm saying? So, I'm going to just start taking a lot of water guns and putting them in bins and holding them. I'm going to do, I'm going to start getting water guns like I did with the Nerf. Because I noticed this summer, I had a lot of people asking me for water guns. Um, and it was a hot summer. So, I know what, you know, when I did have a couple of them, I was selling $5 water guns for 10 and 15 and getting it because it was hot and people wanted, people wanted them. So, this... It was actually a dollar. I mean, two dollars. I was very shocked because these are normally five bucks. So normally they're four ninety nine. I sell them. I sell them for eight to ten. Um, you know what I mean? And uh, this is actually a dollar ninety nine. So I was definitely okay with that. The same place you've seen um those five bags of action figures. Uh, this came out of there too. A bag of wrestlers. Uh huh. 
This was in there as well. Um, this was actually five bucks. I meant to put this back, but I got so caught up in joking with the guys, I totally forgot. But this Hulk, I will put him in the bin with all uh, with. I'll put that in like the bin with my regular uh, figures. Um, not both Hulks. This is actually a pretty interesting bag. This bag was five bucks, and we have a Marvel Legend Bullseye. Whoop! So, I'm sorry. We have a Marvel Legends Bullseye in here. I don't know. I just realized. Oh, that's why I didn't put that light on. We have like a Marvel Legend 3 inch 3 quarter, aka Marvel Universe. Um, Mark 1 Iron Man. We have a Thor here. And we have one of the, I think a Clone War Trooper. And we have a regular 6 inch Marvel Legend uh, Captain America right here. And we also have an Iron Man, the three and three quarter guy. They have a three and three quarter. Um, I think this is an Apocalypse. He goes with the three and three quarter line. He's just a lot bigger. So this bin right here is definitely worth the uh, the five bucks. Was it five dollars or? Yeah, definitely worth the five dollars all day. This guy, believe it or not is a vintage Jurassic Park teddy bear. Um, it's from a company called um, Daikon. Um, and this is like uh, one of the original Jurassic Park plushes. They don't say Jurassic Park on it, but it is a Jurassic Park dinosaur. It was only $3, and they probably sell for around 40 to 50 bucks for this, believe it or not. I'll put that there, because I know what that is. I'll put stuff a certain place everywhere, so that way I know what stuff is. And this is a bin of like some miscellaneous stuff that um, from the stuff you saw yesterday, it's like some more Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, five ninety nine. Um, we do have a six inch. I think he's like a six inch um, Stormtrooper. A couple of other turtles in here as well. One of the guys didn't want it. He asked me if I wanted it because everybody know I'm a toy guy. Then the best, one of the best ones in here is. All these. A lot of people don't really like a lot of the Star Wars figures. Let me tell you, you got when you got a bin of this stuff, it's worth money. This is actually five bucks, and there are a lot of Star Wars figures, including some of the uh, the Imaginex. Unfortunately, some of these guys are missing heads. But you know, there's about seven or eight figures in here that do have heads, and not to mention the Imaginex versions of the, of uh, of like the Star Wars characters. So that's that makes it worth it. Let me put this down for a second again. Well, this bag has a hole in it, so that'll be garbage. Then my daughter, uh, let me get this bin. I brought both of these bins. Uh, like I said, I buy the bins because um, this place, they sell a bins cheaper than anywhere else. Everybody else wants like eight, seven or eight dollars for a bin. Sometimes their bins don't even have tops to them, and people still buy them, which is absurd. But they sell their bins like this size bin here is like normally they're always two ninety nine, and then the little bigger ones be three ninety nine or four ninety nine like that. And they sell again; they do get them periodically. Well, more than more than like some of the other places. And uh, I get them because I like the clear bins, as you see here. My stuff is in bins. Again, this is not supposed to have been this long. Uh, this big link is going upstairs. Uh, I'm going to display him because I have a whole bunch of Nintendo crap. It was $3.99. So he's going upstairs to be displayed. Then this here, this is actually, this is normally how they do it. It's like you're paying $2 a figure because normally they put three. Before the pandemic, they used to put like four to five figures in here and put them for this price. Before, I mean, you know, before the pandemic, now they're putting three figures which is still a lot cheaper than some places because some places you go to, some other thrift shops, they individually uh, they individually sell these for like $4.99 to $7.99 each figure. And people buy them because people do sell these things for like 10 bucks. These are like the Titan Hero stuff. So, yeah. Um, Turbo Man t-shirt. It's Turbo Time. Of course, it's Lego, so... 
uh, the parts are still sealed. I don't know if it comes with figures or not, but it was only two ninety nine, dollars and it is Lego, so I got it. So when I do sell my huge Lego minifigure collection, I'll have a lot of stuff to go with it. This, I actually have the, uh, where the uh, Wild Things are, the McFarlane figures still on card or in their boxes. And for a while, for about seven, eight months now, I kept telling uh, a lot of people, if you see any of the books and stuff, I want them. Uh, and today I was there when this came out. So pretty cool. Uh, this Miss Piggy, I got one, and this other kid who collects, he got one as well. Um, this is actually four bucks. Um, she is brand new. I really don't deal with plush, but I figured why not. This is a sleeper. This was actually, I forgot where this was in, but um, this is obviously a bag. They individually had these priced at $8 each. And I guess people weren't buying them. And they put them in a bag. And it was actually... I forgot what the hell it was in. It was in something. But I didn't pay for it. Didn't steal it neither. Just in case you wanted, you're wondering. This doll, believe it or not, I had to look it up. Um, she, she's, she went for 3 bucks, And it says exclusive first edition. So I think she's like... Her name is... Um, what was it? Um, Lam... What? Lamley or Lamely or whatever her down her name is. But um she's actually supposedly be one of the first uh curvy dolls. Like a doll that got, you know, that got some size to her, like kind of like an ethnic body type of doll versus like the regular slim perfect uh model body Barbie doll. So I got it. Um she sells for around 25 to 30 sold. And I figure for three bucks, you know, I can make a fifteen dollar profit off of that. So, so be it. This I snatched this real quick. I saw this and I was like, "Oh, this is old." And uh, it was three ninety nine, and it does have a lot of cards from <clears throat> from the sixties, I believe. I looked up one card. One card sold for three dollars. For three dollars. So considering what's in here, I was like, "Oh, okay, for three dollars." Is worth it because one card was already sold three dollars. So I grabbed that. Normally I don't mess with sport cards and stuff, but again, for that price, I couldn't go wrong. And again, like I said, with these Titan Hero type stuff, they always not at all basic prices at five ninety nine. But again, you know, I sell a lot of these and I get five dollars a figure for them. Sometimes I'll say uh, two for eight. Which is still not bad because I could sell two and still make a two dollar profit, knowing that these cost me six dollars. And I get it, you know, people do buy them. All right. Again, I got this. It was two ninety nine. A Star Wars it says medium. And Star Wars Spock. I kind of screwed up because I didn't really pay attention uh, to see what was in here. And okay, I'm hoping. It comes with the, uh, wait, what it says? Includes what? Okay, includes shirt. That's it. <laughs> okay. Whatever. I'll toss that over there in that corner. This guy here, I got it because it was a dollar. 99 cent. This is like the Micro Machine Star Wars set, like the Stormtrooper. And it's only got one figure and one little vehicle inside, but I figure for a buck. I'll put it with my Micro Machines and uh, Mighty Max stuff. Then here, here's another bag for $5.99. Was this one cheaper? Nope, it was still $5.99. Um, you have Anakin as Darth Vader, which is kind of like an oxymoron, considering the fact that he's not supposed to look like that when he has his uniform on, because he was horribly burnt and almost died, so he shouldn't be... He shouldn't have that face, but whatever. Then you have... um. I am Patriot. <clears throat> and here we have uh, Action Man. I think that's Action Man or Max Steel figure in there. So you got that. Then, of course, last but not least, it has no controller, but I did plug it up because all it has is the, it's just a 4 gig Xbox 360. This one kid, swear he knows everything. I mean, he means well, but, you know, you know there was a, uh, a helmet. 
that he gonna tell me it wasn't Luke Skywalker and it fine it wound up being Luke Skywalker. Now he gonna try and tell me about the 360. Everybody know the regular 360, the four gig does not come with a hard drive. He tells me it does. Whatever. Uh anyhow. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys learned something from this. I think an hour's enough. Um way more than what it should have been. Thank you for watching. Peace.